Welcome to Spirit Live. I'm Roma Fisher. Thank you again, my partners and friends across Canada. You know, uh, we're on the air uh, teaching the Word of God. God uh, invited us and brought us and gave us opportunity to preach the Word of God, teach the Word of God across Canada. And we thank you, my partners and friends, for supporting us. Thank you for prayer. Thank you for sending in your donation. And we appreciate that. We pray for you every day here. We thank you. And I believe this message will be timely for you, those of you across Canada. God bless you. We'll see you uh, somewhere along the line here at the end of the program. Our title of my message is uh, Dealing with Loss and Living Life to the Fullest. I thought I'd add that on there too. <laughs> Our topic is Long Life. And I want to read over here to, um, over in um, Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. It says here, uh, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2, and I'm going to read also in Deuteronomy. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant or Moses' uh, servant, helper. He said, my, my servant is dead. You know how many times that God has to remind us some things that are very, you know, uh, should be pretty apparent. My servant Moses is dead, therefore the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I'm giving them. So I want to make a point here to you, for you to, to understand, first of all, that God wants us to live life to the fullest. He wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to live long and strong. He, just, he don't want you just to barely make it to the last breath. I believe that we have precedent in the Bible to believe God, to live our last days to the full and go without sickness and disease. God wants us to be healthy. And when we're ready, we can go. I don't know what you believe. I don't know what you've been taught. And there's not too many teachings on, on death and dying. But I changed my message from death and dying this morning because my wife said, don't talk about that. I did have a message. I talked about uh, living yesterday at a funeral. That, we, that death is not the end. Jesus said, if you die believing in me, you'll still live. Just that you'll be at Father's house, you won't be here. Amen? So let me just mention here as an introduction that we've all experienced our loved ones or losing our loved ones, the death of our loved ones. It hurts, especially when we lose someone that is very close to us. I was telling my wife this morning, I'm, I've lost several members of my family. Most of them were very young, in their 40s and 50s. You know, I'm getting closer to 70. My mom was 60, 59 years old when she passed away, 59. I had a brother who was 42, another brother 52. My, brother was, my sister was 45 years old. My dad was just making... 83, and he, a couple of days before he passed away. We have all lost people. And there's many kinds of losses. There's many kinds of things that we grieve in life. I can, I, can, I can test you right now that there's many people, maybe all of you right now are grieving something. I would venture to say that all of you right now are experiencing some degree of loss some degree of pain of, of losing something or someone. God doesn't want you to be overwhelmed when we experience many kinds of emotions. Emotions are emotions. They're not to rule us. You can rule your emotions. Now I'm going to teach this not because I, I remember first of all this morning that some people have lost different ones here, lost people. 
very, very, uh, you know, very, um, we all can experience it. We all, we all can experience it. Like whether you do it now or, or later, you will experience it. And you will die. Some of us, you know, uh, you know, Bible says that some of us won't die. Uh, Jesus might just show up. And most of you are saying, yeah, praise God, let's, let's, let's wait, wait for him, you know. But in the meantime, you don't have to suffer alone. You know, you can lose not just loved ones, but you can lose a job and be grieving. You can lose part of your, uh, part of your body, the use of part of your body. Some of us are grieving because we don't, we're not as fast as we used to be. You know, you know, you can't walk as fast as you used to. And uh, I know uh, you lose you lose some of the energy. But I'm I'm full of energy. I'll tell you that right now. But we've all experienced some kind of loss. But we can make a decision right now to make a choice as to what is best for us when we're going through grieving. Some people have lost families, marriages, property, gotten bank bankrupt. So there's loss of many, many kind of things. Not just losing someone. But we can, we can connect with people and we can communicate our pain and we can just share with other people around us. And sometimes, you know, I've done so many funerals over the years, even this year so far. That is, when people, when everybody's gone home and the, the people are at home alone now, they need, still need you there. One of the greatest things about when someone loses someone is when family's around. You don't have to say anything. Just be around. But no one to leave, too. Yeah, don't move in right away. So we, we don't have to suffer alone. God, God cares deeply about our, our needs, our wellness. God cares for the people we love. And so we can overcome loss, and we can bounce back in life. Although some people think, you know, this will never, this will never end. It'll, it's going to end. And sometimes people, you know, when I do the funerals, that people think they're going to live here forever. Well, you're not. You're not going to live here forever. And what we have right here is, we're, you know, we're, I think about this just recently. I think about how many people I know that, that passed away. You know? And, uh, and, and some people live like they're, they're not going to, they're, they're, they're live here forever. There's, you know, listen, we need to live right. And do what God calls us to do, Right? So I, I want to share with you and to, you know, give you some strength and encourage you. God dealt with Joshua with his grief. The death of Moses, he was an overwhelming man, he did miracles, a great leader, he was a great confidant, a great a great uh, mentor. And they think of it, he wor worked under this man, and, and when he died, he, the sense of a loss he felt. I know when, I, when Brother Hagin passed away, I, I had some grieving, and I, I just felt a loss there. Brother Hagin talked about when, when Smith, Smith Wigglesworth died, and many people felt the loss there. And uh, we, we grieve the loss of great men. Just recently, you know, we... I uh, heard about uh, Dr. Charles Stanley. Anybody ever watched Stanley? He's a wonderful man, a man of God. He's gone to, to be with the Lord. In Joshua 1 and 2, the Lord said to, to Joshua, I said, my servant is dead. Therefore, as time has come for you to lead these people, go across the Jordan into the land I'm giving them. Now, God gave Joshua a purpose and a reason. 
For you, when you're suffering loss, you need to find a purpose to live and go on. And God gave Joshua a reason to go on, to a purpose to live. He was to be a leader of the people. He was to be strong and courageous for the people. Read verses 8 and 10 there. They tell us that people die without a reason. Or they die without when they don't have a reason to live. When they don't have a purpose in life, they seem, they seem to vanish. So, so we all need a purpose in life. Very often we see older couples who, who one passes away and not very long later, the other one passes on. And now there's exceptions. Because, and I'm going to show you in a moment why that's so. After someone dies, we all must move on. Or when we lose something and we're grieving something, we all must move on. There are other people who need you. And you shouldn't be worshiping that one person and putting all the energy on that one person. They're not God. I said, they're not God. And God created you. That's part of that person's life in your life. But that's not your whole existence, the reason of your existence of one person. I'm not being hard. I'm trying to tell you something here from the word of God. He doesn't want you to be so overwhelmed and hurt that you're no good to anybody anymore. God wants you to get up from there and to be strong. So, he plans for us to go on. He doesn't cancel our purpose when someone that we love is gone away or our spouse is gone. He doesn't want us to mourn forever and to suffer in depression and be uh, forlorn or sense of, a sense of everybody's for, forgotten about you. He cares about you. Hi everyone, thank you for watching. I believe that you're being encouraged by the Word of God. You know, the Bible talks about when Jesus, the Bible says in the Matthew chapter 4, verse 24 and 9, uh, 35, 36, he said Jesus went around and he went preaching or teaching, preaching and healing. That's the succession in which he went. He went about teaching the Word of God, preaching, proclaiming the Word of God, and he went out healing. And so you have to hear the Word of God to get faith. And so I believe that as you hear some more of the Word of God, uh, you'll be ready to receive. So we'll be right back at the end and pray with you. The Spirit Alive Helpline is open during Sunday broadcasts. Counselors are available to answer your calls. Call us for prayer support and encouragement. We can also assist with partner services. You can make a donation, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually. Let us know how the program is helping you. We would love to hear from you. Call us at 807-285-9945. Thank you to our generous partners and volunteers. Together, we're sharing the spirit of faith. Miigwech. Hello, viewers and friends. Start this year by speaking powerful words over your life, your health, your family, your work, and your business. In this exciting book, The Great Confession, Pastor Mark Hankins teaches about the power of positive confession and the life-changing results you can expect when you speak God's Word. We encourage you to get a copy of The Great Confession by sending a donation of any amount to Spirit Alive. When you request your book, please include your name and full mailing address just mail your donation to the address on the screen or call our helpline to process your donation through credit card. Spirit Alive is 100% donor funded. It's viewers like you that help us keep sharing the spirit of faith across Canada. Miigwech. All I want
He doesn't want you to be so overwhelmed and hurt that you're no good to anybody anymore. God wants you to get up from there and to be strong. So, he plans for us to go on. He doesn't cancel our purpose when someone that we love is gone away or our, our spouse is gone. He doesn't want us to mourn forever and to suffer in depression and be uh, forlorn or sense of, a sense of everybody's forgotten about you. He cares about you. Now, uh, you know, we talk about grief or grief or grieving. What's the meaning of grieving? And I, and I was looking at some things. That grief or grieving is sometimes an overwhelming emotion for people, regardless whether they, their sadness will stem from someone who they lost a loved one or some, they themselves have uh, uh, some kind of a terminal illness. So the best way to explain grief is, is experiencing uh, deep anguish after a significant loss. As we mentioned, it could be of a death of a loved one. And there's often included with that is, is a psychological distress, like separation anxiety. Sometimes there's confusion involved or, or just a yearning, an obsessive dwelling on the past and an apprehension about the future when you lose something, when you lost someone, is that you wonder what's going to happen next. How am I going to live with that, without that person? I've heard people say that many times. How can I live without that person? Well, you live without that person. They're not God. Hmm? And, and so we, we have heard, as I mentioned, everyone here, we, we suffer. The way we suffer is the way we've learned to suffer. The way we've dealt with it so far in life is the way we have learned about it. Culturally. In, in other ways, religiously, maybe, we learn to deal with these things. They say there's, uh, there's five stages to, to uh, grieving. One is denial. We just can't believe it. I can't believe I lost that job. I can't believe I got fired. I can't believe I, uh, she, she died. He died. And uh, we just can't uh, seem to, uh, you know, uh, understand that. It's hard. Anger. We get mad at the, uh, everybody. We get mad at the, the hospital. We get mad at the, uh, the, the police. and We get mad at everybody. We get mad at them. Why don't you treat them like, why don't you help out over here? So we just start getting mad. That's part of your response in grieving. And so when you're around people, you need to understand those things. And we try to bargain, you know, bargain our way. And depression sets in. And then finally we accept the fact that this person is not coming back anymore. So these are, these are just uh, stages. You can study them. Someone asked, what is the fastest way to get over my grieving? And uh, here is something you can, you can try. Uh, you know, I always tell people at funerals, I said, you know, allow yourself to cry. It's okay to cry. Cry as much as you want to. Practice uh, taking care of yourself. Eat, sleep, do whatever you can to help yourself. Explore, they say explore spirituality. In other words, read your Bible, pray, go to church. Don't stay at home. You know, people just, they, they stay away. Especially, you know, in church I find when people go into trouble, they stay home instead of running to God and, and the people. They run away. They isolate themselves, which is, which is not a good thing to do. There's a time of isolation. You could do that during your day, but there's a time to come together with people. Welcome supportive people. Allow people to help you. You know, you'll say, oh, no, I don't need it. No, no you know, when my dad was grieving my mom, I would often go to him and say, Dad, I, listen, come with me. Let's go get some res gas. Let's go to the reserve and buy gas. He said, oh, no, no, no. He, and he would always uh, say no to me. And I'd go back again, hey, I'll pick you up. I'm going, uh, going, let's go get some, go for a drive. Oh, no, no, no. And then one day he died. I didn't see him for three days. And I was right next door at the skating rink. We all went to skating one night. 
And they uh, went home. I didn't see my dad that night. I went there. I hadn't seen him for three days. And I went through the whole thing. Too. I should have called him. He passed away. But, you know, he, he wanted to be alone. Express your feelings. Recognize and share your feelings with people. One thing people do is they honor, when they lose someone, they honor that person. They honor them in some kind of memory. And that's a good thing to do. Yeah. And you could, you don't, uh, you know, another thing to do when, when you lost someone is don't make big moves. Don't sell everything. Don't, don't change uh, whatever, you know, don't uh, get married right away. My wife says to me, and I know different, we have jokes, you know, all of us, some of us have morbid jokes. <laughs> but uh, sometimes, you know, you, you have to be, uh, you know, laugh about things. You know, uh, us Ojibwe's, we laugh about things that other people don't laugh about, and we wonder why. <laughs> but we joke about things that are serious. Even if someone has a loss, maybe lost a foot, they'll start joking about that thing. <laughs> Socially, you're not supposed to be doing that, but we do it, and we, we just like, oh, why did he say that? We have these, uh, this, is the, this is the way we deal with things. When I was in school and university, uh, college, my teacher would say, Roma, you always laugh about everything. <laughs> well, I was suffering, grieve, grieving, loss. I had lots of loss in my life. And I would find ways to joke about things. And uh, that's the way I dealt with it. Laughed and, and, and joke about things. So, so you know, uh, people deal with it different ways. So... Uh, and grief is very personal. No, no people do the identical thing. Right? The people do, do it different. So when people talk about grieving and mourning, you know, uh, there's two different things. You know, uh, grieving is very personal. It's something that happens on the inside of you. But mourning is something that you see publicly. It's a public expression. You know? Uh, we do that. So the Israelites mourn for, for Moses. It says for 30 days. They, they, they had this practice, and they, they did it for 30 days, and then they moved on. And uh, they did it publicly. You know, sometimes, you know, when someone passes away, I notice this, I've done a lot of funerals, I've done a lot of funerals. And then people, they get, a, they, get uh, they, they, uh, they don't like it when other people cry. Why? Because it, it upsets them. I'm like that. If my wife is crying, say, oh, honey, please don't cry. <laughs> well, she, I should encourage you to cry. Right? But that's, that's me. I, I'm not being mean. I, that's the way I've learned. And my granny would tell me, don't cry. They would tell us when we were kids, eh? you're a big boy now, don't cry. You know, so so we all deal with uh, we learn different things, our responses, but we can't let grieving or grief overtake us, and that's the enemy coming in later. He'll take advantage of your grieving. He take you down a long road. So grieving or grief is real, and we shouldn't take it lightly or become overwhelming that it destroys us. Uh, the scripture says that David didn't let his grief overtake him when he lost his son. He knew that he would see his son again, and he had a purpose in his own personal life to go on without the boy. You know, uh, in, in uh, on a lot of these um, funerals that I do, I try to encourage the people. Funerals are for the people that are there, not for the one that's gone. Funerals are for the people that are there so you can encourage them to live and to have, to have hope. Right. We inspire people to have hope. Too late uh, to try to help someone. They're already gone, right? So, so, so you can't let, let it over, overcome your life. So what do you do? Here, what's the response you should do? What you, should you not do? One thing you shouldn't do is start living in the past and just dwelling on 
what it was like all the time. Thank you for watching the program. Uh, we want to pray with you. And, you know, if you never received Jesus or you're coming back to the Lord, you've been away from God, you can, you can come to God any time. Uh, if you were saved before, just say, Jesus, God, I'm sorry for my, my ways. I've, I've erred, I've turned away. And I'm coming back home. Forgive me. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. And uh, you'll see that right there. He'll cleanse you with His blood from all your unrighteousness and make you right standing again with Him if you've been out of fellowship. You know, you don't get unsaved. You get out of fellowship. So when a, a Christian gets out of fellowship with God, maybe they uh, went out and did something wrong and they have sinned. The Bible says you don't get unsaved again, you get out of fellowship. So turn back to God. Ask, tell him that you're, you're uh, sorry for your sin. Uh, ask him for strength and he'll forgive you and you'll be right on back on the road uh, of your salvation. And so don't be afraid, you know, uh, come to God. But if you've never been saved, the Bible says the very first thing we do is confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and we have to recognize that God sent His Son Jesus to redeem us, to save us. You know, the Bible says the whole world, um, you know, belong. This whole world, Jesus belongs to them. So, Jesus belongs to you. Salvation belongs to you. So, if you accept Jesus in your life, you'll be born again. Jesus said, "Unless a man is born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God." And so, I want to ask you to pray with me right now, like I did many, many years ago. And uh, say this prayer with me. He said, Dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I turn away from my sins. I turn away from my life. And I turn to you. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you're the Savior of the world. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And so thank you, Father, that I'm now born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you. So if you said that prayer and you turn away from your sins, you come to God, you are not born again. It doesn't matter if you had any kind of feeling or anything like that. I happened to have a feeling when I got saved. I started to cry and weep. But I believe no matter what, if you believe that, you are not born again. We'll see you next time on Spirit Alive. God bless you.